Good morning and welcome to the December 12th meeting of the Scambia Children's Trust. The meeting is being called to order at nine o'clock. At this time, we ask that all cell phones be turned off and placed on silent mode for the duration of the meeting. If you would like to make any public comments, please complete the form located on the table to the left of the podium and turn it in to Ms. Alma. Ms. Alma, please proceed with roll call. Thank you. Ms. Woods? Present. Mr. Williams? Here. Mr. Peden? Here. Dr. Northup? Present. Mr. Leonard? Present. Ms. Kane? Commissioner May? Here. Ms. White? Here. Judge Harris? Thank you. Thank you. And now, Commissioner May, would you please lead us in the pledge? Yes, ma'am. Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? So, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The agenda is approved. And now we are moving on to approval of the minutes. So moved. The staff recommends approval of the minutes of the November 14, 2023 general board meeting as presented. We have a um, motion. A second. second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Minutes are approved. Up next is the treasurer's report, Mr. Peden. Thank you, Madam Chair. You'll Thank see you. the financial report in your packet. It's very detailed. Uh, that's been posted online as well in, in the packets for the public. Um, Tammy a Abrams continues to do a, an excellent job with our uh, financing and monitoring um, our, our office and, and our, our grants. And uh, you'll see that uh, from the, the the financial highlights that there are there are no um, unusual or abnormal transactions conducted during the month if you have any questions uh, the finance committee has reviewed these and if you have any questions uh, just let me know if not we will uh, file these for um, the financial statement will be filed for audit thank you I think dr Norbert. yes sir um, Mr. Peden, I had a question regarding the membership for the Florida Association. I saw two separate entries in there with the same timeline. Adam was just curious as to why that was. So I broke that down based on the number of employees that are administrative and program. So a percent went to admin and percent went to program. So it was one charge, but I broke it up between the two. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No other questions. We are moving forward with public comment. We have two um, forms. Ms. Carolyn Appleyard. Ms. Alma, will you please keep the time? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I just wanted to share with you all. I've been here from the beginning, you know. I um, walked through all these processes, sat at one table, and now been watching everything, and the process works. And I'm so excited to see things were not a rubber stamp. The staff has grown and developed. It's a great staff. Probably the biggest asset is that staff. And I really encourage you to take their recommendations. You've authorized them to make the recommendations. And now's the time to support them. They have put an am amazing amount of time into trying to keep everybody happy and growing and everything. And sometimes that just doesn't work. We knew from the beginning that some of the programs wouldn't work. We knew many of them were targeting the same kids and maybe there weren't that many kids. But the committee was not in a position and the staff wasn't in a position to say that up front. They had to let the process work. That's where we are and it's really exciting. You can move on to other things. You're gonna learn a lot from what's been done, but I just really encourage you to support the staff. Thank you. Thank you. We have Mr. Cantor, Jeff. Is he not in here? Jeff? 
Yes. Hello. Hi, thank you so much for uh, letting me come in. My name is Jeff Cantor, and uh, I'm the grant manager for the Children's Theater Company. And first of all, I would like to thank all the ECT staff for all their assistance, and in particular, their patience in helping us to understand how to present our invoices and as we came perilously close to a cash flow crisis. And we also deeply appreciate the board and Commissioner May's strong counsel uh, to ensure that we actually meet with ECT executive staff and clarify all essential topics. And at the meeting, which was held last Thursday, we offered to make up the missing dosages that the board and the staff have felt we were delinquent and we would pay that out of our own pocket from our own operating budget. And should the board approve, we're prepared to move forward under the corrective action provision that ECT has established in its guidelines. And also the ECT staff meeting allowed us to answer mutual questions with regards to our budget and numbers, um, which permitted clarification on critical budget misstatements and overstatements announced at the last hearing on November 28th, all of which were graciously accepted and corrected. And at the end of the meeting, we were informed that we had cleared up all their questions and that they were going to go ahead and recommend the budget change request that we had submitted to the board. So thank you for that. And the only thing I would like to say is, is respectfully in the future, if a provider is going to be asked to, to publicly comment on a document that we had not produced ourselves, nor ever seen that the document and the claims that they're being asked to comment upon to the board be submitted to us ahead of time so that we, uh, we can answer the questions more effectively. Um, we truly had no idea as to where the, some of the numbers that we were hearing came from or how they were aggregated or their veracity. Uh, namely, the, the amount that we were over budget um, on salaries, the misstatement that we paid overtime to our staff, the actual number of staff that we employed, and the timing of our invoices. Uh, the greatest overstatement that was repeated numerous times was that we were $20,000 over our salary budget. Uh, that was completely incorrect. We we're actually only about $7,200 over on salaries, and that's less than a 6% shift in that one budget line item, um, which was approved. And ECT staff now understands that there was zero overtime paid to anyone. Our final submission to ECT, we were over budget by about $400 on our total bottom line item. Um, and we mistakenly believe that with many other grants that we've had that we could allocate surplus funds from one uh, area of the budget. Uh, uh, we completely over budgeted food, $31,000, to cover a shortfall in bus transportation and space rental. And we stayed within that budget, as I said. All of the things that we wanted to go over. Sorry, that's time. Time? Okay, thank you so much. We appreciate you having us in. Thank you. No other public comment, correct? No other public comment. So we are now moving on to the business portion of the meeting. Ms. Krupa will be addressing a few items under programs. Did you have another, did you have public comment? We have another public comment for him. Good morning. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rodney Jones. I'm with New World Believers. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you guys for just allowing us an opportunity to operate under this mental health grant. Um, however, uh, we now find ourselves at a disadvantage simply because we're facing some financial um, hardships based on our reimbursements. Um, New World has spent upwards of about $60,000, and we're in the third month, we're in the third month of this grant. We are contracted to serve at least 40 kids every 90 days. We're at 53 kids in 90 days. So we're doing what we're supposed to do, but we still find ourselves at a disadvantage. I I'm wondering what is reasonable for an organization to ask when its reimbursements come back. Because we're shifting money from other programs to support this program 
but not being recompensated for that particular program. So it puts us at a disadvantage. So I'm trying to find out what's reasonable. What's reasonable to ask the agency to do in regards to reimbursements? Is that tied to attendance? And if it is, how is that tied to attendance? I understand there's been a lot of issues with a lot of different programs. My program is an open book. I've been doing this for the last 20 years, serving our community and serving the public um, and trying to provide services to our young people, contract with other agencies as of now. Anything that has been requested of me, I have provided. I still find myself at a disadvantage. So I'm trying to see what's reasonable. If you want to come to my agency, come. You want to audit me, you can. I'm fine with that. I track all my kids. I upload all my data. I keep all my records. I do all my sign-in sheets from staff to youth. If you want to come, come. Everything I do, you can see. But yet, I find myself at this place, and it's, it's, it's becoming difficult for me to operate under this type of um, stress. So that's my comment. Ms. Tammy. So our contracts give us 21 days after the um, reimbursement is submitted and accepted. There were several things that we wanted clarification on, on his invoice, so it was sent back a couple times. We did not have any children in SAMUS at the time, so we were looking at that also. So it was submitted, his October reimbursement was submitted for approval yesterday. So it will be paid this week for October. And I don't have November yet, so we'll, we'll get it once. I don't, I can't pull up SAMUS right now, so that was one of the things. I sent it to program to have them review and see if it was in SAMUS. Thank you. So, Tim, you said that October reimbursement was because of what? The delay we, was because of what? We had several different items that needed uh, clarification. There were items in there that were submitted that were from September before the contract started, so we had to have those removed. We had an employee on his payroll that also works for another uh, provider, so we wanted clarification that they weren't on the same times at all. So we were looking for that. We asked for that. We got all those. Um, we got everything over the weekend, was finished with all of our questions. So we got it submitted yesterday for approval to finance approved it, and now it went to program for them to review and make sure that all the data is in SAMUS. Okay. Thank you. Now on to programs. The recommendation, staff recommends approval of the resolution 2023-29 allowing for the budget amended requested by the Children's Theater. Kim. Okay, on the budget amendment by Children's Theater, they are asking to move a total of $21,211 between line items. They're gonna take 20,200 out of food and snacks and 1,000 out of uh, printing and uh, copying and move uh, 7,181 to their labor 4,265 to utility, I'm sorry, to rent, 6,230 to office supplies, and the other big one was 3,023 to client transportation. Um, if we approve that, then I can finish uh, paying out there that they have left owed for uh, August and September. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, and that, I, I guess my question would be, I guess this is just a house cleaning because we're recommending to not, we're recommending later on in the meeting, the staff's recommending to not renew their contract, but we're recommending to move money in their budget. So th this is the, for the year one contract, we're recommending adjusting their budget. And then the other recommendation is for the year two. Oh. So in order to close out the year one, we're having to make it a budget amendment is what you're saying? Correct. It was more than the 10% our policies require. To, if it's over 10%, then it comes to the board for approval. And what does that percent make, make that? This percentage is, uh, one moment, I'll tell you. 10% would have been 19,600 and they're at 21,000. So we're at about 12%.
Could you repeat? Could you give me those numbers again? I'm sorry. Could you tell me those numbers again? The of where each, which each line item? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So they're taking twenty thousand two hundred out of food and snacks, and one thousand eleven out of printing and copying, and moving increasing uh, seven thousand one hundred eighty one into labor, four thousand two hundred and sixty five into space rental. 6,230 into office supplies, 512 into professional development, and 3,023 into client transportation. And they're moving it all out of what line item? They are moving it out of food and snacks and uh, printing and copying. Madam Chair, do you mind? Yeah, if you have a comment for clarification, Jeff, I yeah, might before I vote. Saying. You'd have to come to the podium, though. Certainly. Oh, that is your name, right? I'm Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. All right. We realized once we started looking at the actual numbers that 31,000 for food, being that we were budgeted for, uh, I think it was 30 or 35 dosages. That was around $900 per dose, and we had grossly over budgeted for that. So what we're trying to do is to move the items to where they actually were needed. Staff was working with the children. Space rental was for the children. Transportation was for the children. And that's really what we're trying to do. The other thing that I'll say in regards to the 10% that it needed to shift was that we found out during our meeting that had we known that ahead of time, when we first went over a line item on the budget, we could have done incremental shifts as we saw where it was needed rather than have to come at the very end and make something that was, you know, a little over 10% as opposed to doing, you know, under 10. Thank you. Any other questions? Does anybody want to make a motion? Uh, so move. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? N no, Madam Chair, I, I, no discussion, but I mean, I, I say this as we move into year two when we go. I mean, <laughs> between contract services, you know, sub grant sub organizations, salary, wages, payroll, I mean, we're, you know, we're 65, 70% of the budget. I mean, it, you know, that's fundamentally a problem. I mean, but if there's no option, there's no option. I mean, it's just. But this is for year one, correct? Make sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm there's sure nothing. I'm voting yeah. On the right yeah. yeah. I mean, Stephanie, what I was, I mean, I know there's nothing we can do anything about it, but I'm just making the point. Yes. I mean, I'm just not going to continue to vote uh, at this level for this type of staffing. Right. <clears throat> I, I have a problem with the, the dosage amount because it wasn't the, the, I don't double dose it on the same day. I have a problem reimbursing for that because that wasn't what, when I was on the programs committee, that wasn't the understanding that I received and that wasn't what the contract said. So I have a problem reimbursing for that. Any other discussion? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Um, so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, Mr. Mr. Canner. When did you, you are their bookkeeper, finance person? You call me the grant manager? Yes, sir. So you knew how much the grant award had been? Yes, I did. So you knew how much you were to spend? Well, some of the things we knew how much we'd be spending, some of the things we had to adjust to on the fly, such as the larger cost of space rental compared to have we been able to use a different space, but yes. You knew the total amount you had been granted. I knew that we had 196 roughly thousand dollars in the budget. At yes. what time did you know that you had overexpended? We knew the first time that we were over on space rental in August when we submitted our, our August receipts. And at that point in time, no mention was made of the fact that we weren't that we couldn't shift from where we had grossly over budgeted for food to account for that. Had we done that, we would not be here asking for the adjustment in front of you because we would have done an incremental shift once we saw where it needed to be 
and it would not have been, I mean, we're this much over the 10% that um, Tammy Abrams has said that they could approve without coming before the board. Thank you. Jeff, what, what, what adverse effect if this budget amendment is not approved? Uh, because I'm one of the people that have seen your work. I mean, so, I, mean I, I love the, uh, the adverse effect is just simply that we've already laid out the money and we're not being reimbursed for it. Um, you know, we were prepared if it was uh, asked of us to go ahead and and complete dosages on our own dime. That seventeen thousand dollars would obviously help with that. But, uh, you know, the adverse effect is just that the money that we've already spent will not be reimbursed. And th thank you. Thank you. Th thank you for coming down, Jeff. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. 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 Right. The motion doesn't pass. Next up, we have the staff does not recommend approval of the program changes requested by the urban development. You want to speak on that? Oh. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the staff recommendation not allowing the program changes for the urban development? So moved. I have a second. Second. Is there any discussion? Uh, I, I see, Mr. Riggler, do you have any comment? Do you understand the motion on the floor? Well, it may be too late now. It's already a motion. Madam Chair? Yes, sir. Would you mind hearing? I know that it's of out of course. protocol at this point because we've already made a motion. I do understand the motion on the floor. Uh, we accept that proposition. Uh, we knew when we went in the century that we would be having to build infrastructure. Uh, right now, we're continuing to build that infrastructure in century for a community. We realize there are no schools in century, and the closest thing to a school in century is the U-First Century Center. Uh, this past weekend, we had a community event uh, all about making sure that we're touching every parent, every child that we can. And we expected 100 people at that event, and we got 30. So we, we realized that even over the last number of months, because, you know, we were in Century before you first Century. Uh, the job fairs that we held in Century, the work that we do in Century will continue whether ECT is funding that proposition or not. It's just the proposition of building a community and the requirements. It's not the Urban Development Center that needs the resources. It's the community of Century that needs the resources. But you need partnerships. You need the advancement of relationships. We went to a school and the principal told us, don't leave those flyers. The kids aren't interested. It's hard when you go to a school and you're working to build relationships and the principal even recognizes that there is this deep disadvantage that you're in. So we accept the proposition. Okay, I just wanna make sure you're clear. I, I mean, yes. Yes. thank you so much. I appreciate you all for, for, you. for looking at us. Thank, thank you, you, Madam Chair. Appreciate you. Thank you. We have a motion, a second discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. I'm sorry, can you tell me who seconded that? I didn't catch it. Thank you. So thank you. We will note that we have received notification that Valerie's house has withdrawn the request for any program changes. Ms. Cooper, your next recommendation for staff for the, the year two funding. The recommendation states based on year one results the and deliverable staff recommends the awarding of year two grants for the following programs for the dollar amounts below. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, Kim, were we able to get all the documentation that we needed uh, for backup for uh, all these organizations that we're recommending? The, the pre, the post, and the measurements and some of the things we talked about? Yes, and we have all the information that we could get up through this time, knowing that the contracts are due to end, I think, on February 29th. 2024, and the programs have to provide a full end-of-year report 
okay. following the conclusion of those contracts. So we're still waiting on the final compliance report for a year mm -hmm. one from Yeah, that from would these. be due at the end of March. Okay. What all information did we get from them? They all submitted their two quarterly reports um, for those who started services before June. And for we had four providers come on board in September, and their first quarterly report was November 15th. And they're all measuring um, different metrics. Their goals and outcomes are all different. Their performance measures are different. But from program committee in, I think it was October, we talked about introducing a standard quality measurement um, starting in the year two contracts for out-of-school time, which is also in the RFP. That we would, that year one was startup and implementation and just getting our systems in place to be able to track participant data, basic demographics and attendance so that we would have a foundation to build in quality measures and also a data sharing agreement with the school district starting in year two. Okay. Kim, another question, I'm sorry, and you and I have talked about it. Do we get the sign-in sheets? How, how do we, and I know that we don't mind some crossover in the first year, uh, in terms of the dosage and the participants, um, how do we look at duplication in the kids being served by multiple organizations? Or kids that are already being served uh, before they receive the ECT grant? Well, the, the contracts are for a mixture of above and beyond baseline, but also some providers are offering free services for the first time. So like our contract with the city of Pensacola is for free after school. Our contract with Boys and Girls Club is both an expansion and newly available for free. But there is a way that we can track how many children are duplicated. Um, for example, one of our programs is an enhancement that pops up in an existing program so we can track how many children are participating in both. So that when you're getting accurate, you can get accurate unduplicated numbers of children. So our providers input their attendance into SAMHSA and then we can pull reports and run it out of there for unduplicated numbers. Awesome, thanks Sam. And yes, sir. Mm -hmm. we're, we're recommending for a contract, or we're looking at the contract. I know some of the things we've encountered. One was talked about, David, a clawback and a non-performance clause, some clauses that we should get with legal to make sure we have in the new contract. So I, I really think it needs to, we need to look at our contract um, so going forward. What we're recommending is that we can begin contract negotiations. So we will be um, doing amendments. We're going to be changing and updating our contract. So in January, that contract will be coming back to you guys for approval. It'll go to program committee and to you guys to look at and approve. And then we will, the contracts won't be signed until sometime in February. So we can bring this back up with the new executive director to have them sign them in February. Do right. the contracts already have the clawbacks in it for this past year or no? Do they not have them? Not in our out of school time. Okay, gotcha. So like, does the contract kind of, so are we doing, Performance compliance, uh, are the metrics in the contract? Who, do, who decides the metrics? Or do we add those in the contract and if they don't perform those metrics then there's some type of clawback? Uh, so in year one, the provider submitted their metrics, but what we want to move to in year two is more of a standard instrument um, that's more quality based. And right. so for consistency and accountability, all providers would be assessed and evaluated using the same tool. They so, can still want to improve certain things like behavior, social emotional development, um, but we need a quality instrument to evaluate them consistently so that it's not, not just all self-reported. Yeah, I, I agree, Kim. So when they set their metrics, did they set those metrics based on our needs of assessment and our strategic plan or, or did they kind of come up with the metrics on their own? And they, I'm, I guess that's my question. We drafted the contract based on their metrics that was put in their proposal is how we constructed the contract? That's right. Okay. <clears throat> Any other um, questions, clarification? In the program committees, 
how did we handle if people aren't giving us our data in, in a timely manner? If they're past deadline and we don't, we're in the dark, and then we come up with the same situation again. So in our new contract, we're going to have um, clauses in there for penalties if things are past due. So there'll be, uh, and this is for example, a $500 deduction in reimbursement for if reimbursement's past due. We'll also have in there clauses where we will not reimburse if they're not meeting certain performance measures. The re reimbursement will be reduced. Yeah, and at data has to be in SAMUS, all that stuff. So we're going to have a lot more tightness in our contract coming up so that we can really watch that. Is, it, is there, was there discussed a mechanism in place that the agency or the nonprofit that's applying that their board is informed and their board chair signs off on these contracts? I don't think the board signs off on them at this time. Uh, so that is something we need to look at too, is having the board, like a at board at board chair, a board chair. I would, yeah. I would, with the executive director signing off on these contracts so they under, fully understand. Oh, I think right now it's just the executive director signing them. So we will look at adding that to in um, to our contract. So sometimes we can do it as an attestation that the board has seen it and they sign it, and then um, or but we can add a line for the board chair to sign instead. That'd be great. Okay. So just for clarification, I have a question on that training. So it's it's left up to them to read everything and okay. So we did do a training. We had a Zoom meeting last uh, when the out of school time contracts went out, where we went over all the clauses with okay. them that was in them. Okay. Any other questions? Do I have a motion to approve the year two funding as shown on the agenda? So moved. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Ms. Cooper, you have the floor again with two other recommendations. The staff rec does not recommend year two contract for the children's theater, and the staff does not recommend year two contract for the urban development. Do you want to vote on these individually or collectively? So do we want the board, do we want to address each one individually? Okay. Children's Theater, did you have any additional information you wanted to share? I realize that the uh, staff has recommended that we are not approved for year two, and I realize that based on the feelings of the board and the feelings on the staff that we fell short on the dosages we were supposed to offer this year. We have offered to make those up under the uh, corrective action guidelines that uh, you know we, we would be more than willing to do that. And we feel that our shortcomings this year were greatly due to the fact that we miss, that we underestimated what getting started was going to cost us and how much work that was going to take. And we have 93 kids that are coming back. We're not having to, to do the recruiting that we did last year. And we do feel that we could live up to the contract this coming year if we were given that opportunity. Uh, and again, we are offering and, and it has not been told us whether it's accepted or not to make up the shortfall in dosages for this year. Thank you. Urban development. I just want to make my comment because I wanted to be certain. I know I was the lone vote uh, to reimburse for year one. Uh, and I think, I, I don't think, I know the reason I voted that way is I think we as a board fell short on year one contract. We should have known a lot earlier, just like you should have known a lot earlier that you had overexpended your budget. But I will not be able to, I will have to say not to offer the year two contract. So I just want to be sure I stated that for the record. So urban development. I'm sorry. 
jump real quick. Any other discussion? No other discussion? Are we voting? Oh, yes, sir. Did you want to speak? Oh, no, I don't have any. Anybody have any questions? No. no questions. And, and, and Jeff, I'm, I've never met you, but I do know Eric Dozier, and I know the good work that Eric does uh, in this community and uh, the plays, and I do believe that theatrics, I mean, performing arts is very, very, very important. And so um, I don't want to take this with, in, in telling Meg or Eric to give up because there's, it's still needed. And so I appreciate you being here, and I appreciate the work that Eric's done. We feel we've made a difference in the lives of the kids. That's what's important to us. That's important. Thank you. So we have a motion. We have a second discussion. All in favor of not um, funding the children's theater and urban development? Are we doing both of them or doing them one at a time? Would you prefer to do one at a time? I, I ask if okay. we want to do individually or together. Do you want to do individually? I just, I was thinking that's what we had talked about just a second ago. I may have misunderstood. No, sir. I can do them individually. So the staff does not recommend year two contract for the Children's Theater. We have a motion. We have a second discussion. So all in favor of not funding the year two contract for Children's Theater? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So that motion passes. The second one, the staff recommends to not renew the year two contract for the urban development. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That, recommend, that motion passes as well. As Madam, far as- Madam Chair, I do have a comment on that. Uh, is I am uh, concerned now of the uh, near absence of the Children's Trust uh, contributing in a significant way to uh, children's activities and issues in the northern part of the county. And uh, I would uh, respectfully like to request the staff, perhaps as we are considering new RFPs, to uh, potentially relook at our needs assessment specifically as it pertains to needs in the northern part of the county uh, as we redevelop those or relook at those and uh, make sure that we uh, at least consider uh, some meaningful contributions to needs in the northern uh, Scambia County. Yes, sir, I agree. So um, at this time, we would also like to note that Valerie's House has withdrawn their year two funding request. So moving on to operations. M Madam Chair. Yes, sir. And, and certainly, Dr. North, I'm very supportive of you in the North End and, and my friend, Commissioner Barry. Uh, and I know we're not going to change things overnight, but unfortunately, superintendent school reports came out in 32501, 32503 in the pockets of property. Uh, and the very children that we passed the backs of this tax on, quite frankly, we hadn't moved the needle much. Uh, and when I say when I look at the metrics and I look at the data that's being provided, I'm talking about performance, grades improvement it's not correlating with the data that the district is reporting. And so we gotta get on the same page uh, with these organizations. I'm not gonna vote and pass millions of dollars to organizations that are people in schools other than in my district, uh, and we're not improving, uh, but the reports say that we are improving. Uh, but the state report in the Scammy County School District, they're failing. And so we gotta take a close look at these programs and our contract, exactly what our strategic plan is. If we're gonna change the lives of these children, no, we're not gonna change it overnight. But unfortunately, when people are bringing these reports in, this self-reporting, uh, we're making these significant gains and strides in education and in all these gains. Well, that proof is not in the pudding in our schools. They're still failing and warranted on the west side in my district and district three. Uh, and so that's important for me uh, to continue to look at these needs, these were the needs. We have to get a concentrated need. We can't solve all of the Scammy County problems at w w in one dosage. Uh, we got to laser focus on some specific areas that are at the bottom and improve those areas. Uh, but we got to hold people accountable. Just because I said I can cook don't mean you can cook. I'm just because you said that you got a program and you're improving grades. It's not necessarily uh, the report that citizens are getting. And so I just want the board uh, to be cognitive of that and staff to be cognitive of that. And that's no slight to you, uh, um, Superintendent. Uh, I'm disappointed to have served on a Children's Trust Board uh, in uh, the grades in these schools that were targeted schools are just not improving. 
That's all I had, Madam Chair. But I just hope that you know our providers understand that. I mean, that would be foolish to continue to fund uh, and things are not improving. <clears throat> Thank you. So we're now moving on to the operations portion of the meeting. Ms. White, do you have any updates on the executive director search? I do, I have a lot of updates. So we had a great interview session on December the 4th. <clears throat> we had seven people originally supposed to interview. Um, one withdrew her application and two did not show. So we only interviewed six and out of the, um, I only interviewed four. And out of the four, we, we unanimously picked um, Mr. Walker Wilson and Ms. Lindsey Cannon to come back to another round. And so you all should have received an email from their Zoom interview, so you can watch that. Also, they have been instructed that they can call all of us individually and set up a meeting with us individually, phone call in person for you to ask any individual questions that you might have of them. Um, currently, um, on December the 20th, that will be the next round um, at 5.30. Uh, we, they, we have they each have an hour set aside <coughs> for each candidate. Um, and since um, Ms. Cannon went first the last time on December the 4th, <clears throat> I'm suggesting that um, Mr. Wilson gets to go first this time, has a first time slot from 5.30 to 6.30. Um, Ms. Cannon will have to wait in the lobby with a staff member, so she will not be privy to anything that is said during that first hour. Um, each candidate will give us a 15 minute PowerPoint on their vision of the trust over the next for the next 12 months and then we have 45 minutes set aside for questions afterwards that we will be able to ask each candidate um, i have two questions for us to discuss um, and i'm going to tell you both of them and then we can discuss them i don't know if they need a vote or not um, number one is do we need 45 minutes of question and answer time and number two is can we vote after the second presentation last time we heard the presentations and then we came back the next night to make our official vote. This time it's a little bit different because we've all been given a chance to interview the candidates in individually. And, um, and then we'll also get to hear the presentations. I would propose that we go ahead and vote on the 9th of December 20th because our next meeting is not until January the 10th. And that's a long time for us to wait. It's a long time for them to wait for three weeks. Plus, um, we could already have someone getting ready to start in January if we go ahead and vote on December 20th. So those are my two questions I would like for us to discuss is, do we need the 45 minutes when we might say yes? And also, can, do we need a vote? Can, can we vote for the, our new executive director after the second presentation that night? Ms. White? Yes, sir. Um, the 45 minutes, is that in addition to the hour that they are each allocated, or that would be 45 minutes for Q&A within that one hour? The latter. So we, right now we have 15 minutes for um, their presentation, and then we have 45 minutes set aside. And we might need 45 minutes. The 25 minutes went really fast. Okay, so we like 45 minutes of questions and answers? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, so the next question is, um, do you all want to vote on our new executive director after the second presentation. Yes. 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 I'm okay with it. Yes. Okay. Do we need to do a rec motion? Okay, no. Okay. So that's what's happening. So December 20th, you all are welcome to come back and hear Mr. Wilson, who is in the back of the room, and Ms. Cannon, who is here as well, to present. And we will get to vote on our next executive director. So hopefully by sometime in January, early February, we'll have a new executive director of the trust so thank you so much and thank you to Ms. Appleyard and her team who reviewed the 500 applications and the member of the um of the committee i don't even know our name of the committee who was there for four hours it was fun to spend time with y'all so <laughs> thank you thank you Stephen. madam chair yes sir uh, Ms. white thank you for your leadership as, as well in, in chairing uh this executive search committee you were chair when we had the first time and this time you you were spot on, so thank you for your leadership. And obviously, Carolyn, we could not do anything without you. But um, thanks, Stephanie, and to Carolyn. Yes, thank you both. Thank you. We are now, we have now have Ms. Abrams with the report to the board. Ms. Abrams. Thank you. I'm going to just, this just a short report. Um, I want to focus first on the change of our mission and our um, strategic plan. We updated our mission statement. 
It now states the Escambia Children's Trust invest in our community's future through support of high quality children programs and services, research, education, and advocacy. That is our, our new mission and that is what we are going to be updating our contracts to reflect. I wanted to give a big up, uh, thank you to Carolyn Appleyard and the Complete Search Committee for narrowing down our nearly 500 applications for the executive director position. That was a very big ask and we did not know that we were gonna get so many. So thank you for all your work. Okay, now our updates, um, our office move on campus has been moved to probably the first week of January, we're hoping. It was supposed to be October, then it, November, then December. Now we're looking at January. Uh, we are working with the college and our IT contractor to firm up those dates and have the upgrades done to the infrastructure we need for the training room and the conference room. Now there are, as you notice, several staff members not here today, um, and Kim will be running out of here very shortly. They are going to Orlando for the annual FAC conference that begins tomorrow. So they're going down there to meet with the other um, children's service staff for the state. It helps everybody to help to get come together. Now, uh, you have handouts up there that are from a bill that is being proposed. It's going to hearing today in the committee. Um, I've given you copies of it as it is right now. If it's passed that way, it could have impacts on us. They are Michelle Watson, in fact, is working on it. She is staying up to date and will give us updates as it comes goes forward. The biggest thing, honestly, wouldn't affect us as much as it will some other CSCs. In our ordinance, we did put in that we go up for renewal every 10 years. That is something that will be in this bill that the other CSCs don't have. So there are other things like limitations of term limits and performance measures that would have to be established by each individual um, spe uh, special district. Okay, um, the next thing is our important dates. December 20th is a special board meeting to do the executive director finalist interviews. And to let you guys know, our PSC campus is closed from December 21st through January 3rd, so all of ECT staff will be re working remotely during that time. Um, our next board meeting is January 10th at 5.30. That is on a Wednesday instead of our normal Tuesday because this room was already booked. Okay, so just please let Alma know if you're gonna be in attendance for those meetings and that's all I had for you. Thank you. Do we have anything from legal? Madam Chair, yes, I, I did have one more question, Kim. I mean, and obviously some of the providers have talked to me because they know that I've expressed the uh, disproportionate amount of salaries that are going in. So in this second year, they still have the opportunity to adjust their contract, correct? Or not, the line item, not the budget amount. If, or if providers want to change the line items now, can they do that? That's a question. Tammy, I don't, I don't know. Who. So before the final signature, the, before the final contract is signed, we can have them adjust budget line items and bring it back to you guys for review in January or February before they're signed. Right, I mean, and, and I think these organizations are in goodwill that Tori would not, did not take a look at their budget, and quite frankly, I've talked to two and said, you're, you're absolutely, you're spot on. You know, we, we have disproportionate amount of money, and some, the reason I agree with Mr. Peden that the board chair needs to sign, because some board members didn't know that their staff and their executive staff were moving that type of money into salaries, and I know some boards want to bring goodwill, and they want to change that, so. They do have the ability to do that. I, I guess I'm just acting public because they said they were told that they couldn't. And I was like, I don't know who said that, but. Um, I, we have, not to my knowledge, I don't think any of us have told them they can't. So, so they can't. Um, yeah, and they were allowed to do, when they submitted their second year budget, they were allowed at that time too, to move things about how they thought they were gonna need it. They had an original second year proposal and then another column for uh, what their amended second year proposal was. So we could see what the changes were per line item. Mm -hmm. So um, the only thing I want to say is with children, we do have to have certain staffing quotas, and you know that. Of course. Yeah, okay. So I just wanted to make sure we knew that some, a lot of grants that work with children are going to be high in staff. 
So let me, I, I've got another public speaker. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I agree. Okay. Trust me, Tim, I know I've been doing nonprofit all my life. Okay. Uh, there, there's an SOP of it. But, but my final question, uh, Tammy, is um, when they decide to put the metrics in this contract, who's going to decide, determine those metrics? Are they still, will they still decide it in the second year or will we decide? We're going to decide on standardized metrics of measurement of things that we want to see improved. And then they can add other things if they want to track too, but we're going to have a standardized metrics um, that Kim and the staff will work with the board to come up with. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there something about six months contracts or looking at evaluating at six months to see who's who's performing and who's not and not waiting a year to say they're out of compliance or is that going to be ongoing every month perhaps to say you're not in compliance and we we, we take care of the issue right then so we're going to be on a monthly basis as the reimbursements come in we're going to make sure that they are in compliance with inputting their data we won't have necessarily all the performance measures to compare against on a monthly basis, um, but we will be doing an ongoing compliance review. And I don't know if this is the time, but I would like to, since I was chair of the grant committee for the mental health, and we had one of our um, Mr. Jones come up and talk, if I could sit down with, I could sit down with him and whoever's in charge of those and look at, kind of look at, go ahead and stay on top of what's going on with him, if that's okay. Now, public comment. Mr. Hill. My name is Rhoda Hill, Jr. I'm the um, community outreach coordinator for NWB Hoops. Yes, and uh, I overheard that we had gotten approved for the month of October, and we're digressing to reimbursement um so i'm wondering in terms of reimbursement um we haven't even gotten a, an approval email uh, some of the questions some of the commentary in the emails that are tied to reimbursement um some of it just doesn't make sense and so what you got to understand is some of these organizations are legit. You know, these guys are spending out, forking out $50,000 to $60,000 in terms of operations and things of that nature. And it's all about the kids. And so if we're going to communicate by way of email, can we get responses in a timely fashion? Um, I mean, some of the questions about some of the contract workers that Mr. Jones has shared with us, it just seems like the goalpost continues to move. Here we are in December, and Mr. Jones gave the reimbursement for October several weeks ago. And so I just want to make sure I understand that some of these agencies may not be operating as they should as it relates to the contract. But don't hold everyone else hostage when we respond in a timely fashion to what your request is. And if it's a contract, it shouldn't be a living document. Uh, we've noticed that when we go into Sammy's, everything that is described on, on that form, we comply. Some of the emails that we received, for example, asking about other employees with the last name Jones. What does that have to do with reimbursement? So initially, in order to the police or to legitimize some of these agencies, if that's something that needs to become somewhat of a standard when it's time to kind of police some of these agencies that's come up for this grant, then do that. Um, and so I'm just kind of, just kind of bothered with the, uh, you know, there's a lack of days or type of spirit when it comes to some of these agencies that are really trying to provide for the community. 
especially in 05, 32505. And so some of the questions that we received in the email, again, are just kind of, you know, I, I just don't understand it. And so, again, I know that it was said that we've been approved for October. Sorry, that's time. We haven't even received that, that response. Mr. Hill, I'm going to sit down with you and Mr. Mr. Jones and go over this and talk to um, Dr. Krupa and Tammy, and we'll, and we'll get this sorted out, and we'll figure it out, and we'll bring it back to the board next month, and we'll f give them an update, okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Could I add just a couple of clarifying points? So October services, you know, here we are at middle of December, but as Tammy said, the deadline is the 20th of the month following, and then we have 21 days. So we're within those boundaries, and also with a new contract, there's an added layer of scrutiny, especially in those early months, because we need to make sure that the reimbursement matches this, the level of services delivered. So we sent that, I sent that back, that was me, because I didn't, I wanted to verify that you were actually delivering the services that you were billing the taxpayers for. So when we get payroll for $20,000 for one month, we need to see those itemized payroll activity reports. We need to see data in SAMAS. So we, we need to check when you're filling up a car that that car is going to pick up children. We do this with everybody. We see lots of folks with the same last name. We're gonna ask about that. We have to, right? Like our names are on the line as staff to represent this whole effort. And so it goes through numerous review channels. Finance does theirs, but then program does theirs. And so everyone needs to understand that it's not just an immediate okay. We don't rubber stamp anything. Correct, and when we do see a lot of um, it, employees, we find out are after the budget's been done and everything else, that they're actually 1099 contractors. They're not actually employees. So that was one of the issues we had here. We had to do a budget amendment to move from salaries to independent contractors, to consultants and contractors, because their staff are all 1099 employees. And when I see a whole bunch of the last, with the same last name, I want to see their contracts. So I had them send us all of their independent individual employment contracts because we need to make sure if we have individuals with the same name doing a position that's the same as somebody else, that there's not a huge disparity in the pay rate. So those are things that we are checking individually in, in-house before it got done. So, okay. Thank you for that clarification, Ms. Lindsay. Well, hot off the press, um, I have some good news to share with you all. So last year, um, around beginning of August, September, we had the opportunity to work with the Children's Trust to invest in Pine Forest High School, um, Community Partnership School. We also garnered another grant through University of Central Florida, um, and we've been operational for a year. I want you all to know we started as a D school in turnaround status, and yesterday we found out they're officially a C. So I, I, I wanna thank you, first of all, for your investment and faith that we could do this. Um, the Y staff are fairly irritated. They expect it to be, and I think they're only like a point or two off, so. Um, but like, and, and those type of partnerships are really important in bringing that in. One of the things that you really invested in um, with your dollars is the PBIS system at Pine Forest, which was like negligible. So when we started that last year, there might have been 40 kids. Um, that we're participating and receiving. Um, now there's almost 600, um, to the point that our store is empty. So we're like having to tell the teachers to kind of bring down, I'm sorry, to, uh, so positive behavior intervention. So, and it has to do with showing up to school and being participatory and being, and following the rules of the school. So um, those type of efforts do really work. Um, Weiss, I think, I wanna thank Rick for highlighting that in, um, in his blog, but Weiss is also that investment in their after school and that community partnership school. Those kids, 50% of them are, are A honor roll or AB honor roll, um, and these are targeted lower quartile kids. So I wanna thank you guys. I think that is really great news, and I think more efforts like that, we can see what you're talking about, Commissioner May. So thank you. Thanks, Lindsay. I appreciate it. And 
Um, I think that WISE is just a great example of yeah. the partnership with the healthcare, the faith base, yes. your organization. Uh, it's pretty awesome if people had Blue Cross, Blue Shield, all the partnerships that y'all have brought over there. It's pretty good stuff over there at WISE. Mm -hmm. so thank yeah, you. and it's repeat partnerships because they're also seeing the benefit to uh, the people that they serve. Um, that Sunshine's done a lot of great things with that school as well. So, um, so we look forward to more opportunities like that. Bellevue Middle School is our next one. Um, that should be coming out anytime now. Uh, we've gotten that grant, so we'll be moving forward and have a full K to 12 continuum of a feeder pattern with community partnership schools. So I want you guys to think about what that looks like for these kindergartners that are entering WISE next year. So thank you. Congratulations. Right, thank, you. thank you. And congratulations to Palm Forest too. So we have Miss Leslie next. Good morning. Well, Good morning. I too have something nice and happy, I hope, to share. Um, I totally didn't come here with this on my mind, but felt like it's appropriate for me to say. So I'm Leslie Mickles. Um, I'm the Vice President of Financial Advancement for Boys and Girls Clubs of the Emerald Coast. Um, so I just wanted to share, you all had some wonderful questions earlier um, just about contracts and how all of this works. And most of the time, the general public themselves have no clue about what in the world we're talking about. All they see is the narrative that they see on television and maybe what they read, maybe social media. And so what I'm going to say, and oh my God, I hope my husband and my children don't get mad at me, but what I'm gonna say is I'm personally going to say that I am willing to help whomever you all select as the next executive director. I'm going to personally say that I want to help them be able to share the good stuff. We are doing some incredible things, not just at Boys and Girls Clubs, but some of these other organizations are doing some good stuff, working with young people, helping to move the needle, helping people to understand what a metric is, what baseline is, what does that mean? When we start in June, how does that affect grades that came out for 22, 23? It doesn't. Doesn't have anything to do with that. That work was already done, but it will have an effect on what comes out next year and so helping the general public to understand that because most of them won't understand that and so we just need to have an understanding it's just an educational thing and we can do that together this work is collective it is important for people to understand that that's why wise is doing so well that's why pine forest is doing so well because it's a collective work and the children's trust can move forward when everybody understands as a community that this is collective work it is not about leslie it is about what we can do together to make sure that our children have what they need. Our children are going to be taking care of us, y'all. And if we don't do what we need to do to prepare our babies, we're going to be in trouble. And so it's just so important. So babies, y'all don't get mad at me. I know y'all going to see this on TV. Honey, please don't get mad at me. But I want to do my part to help whomever is coming up next to lead this organization, um, to share the narrative about the wonderful things that we're doing to help move the needle with our babies. Thank you. Leslie, thank you. I get an opportunity to, to firsthand see your work and thank you because Boys and Girls Club, certainly not district, but uh, I've told you probably publicly uh, when we were on our first search, your presentation was one of the best presentations that I've seen in tying all of this together. So <laughs> I'll always remember. I still have it. I used it as a benchmark to go back to. So thanks, Leslie. Yes, and I was not in that 500. On purpose. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So I told, I said, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm stay with Boys and Girls Clubs and I'm going to do my thing on this side. So, but thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Any more public comment? If not, as a reminder, the January meeting will take place on the second Wednesday, not the second Tuesday. Also, we will see you on January the 10th. As I'm sorry. What? Oh yeah, and then also we have the next meeting December 20th at 5:30. Here. Special board meeting. Annual elections will take place in January, so everyone should remember and begin getting their thoughts together as far as that as well. With no further business, we are adjourning at 10:04 a.m. Thank you.